Okay, so an introduction to how to feel feelings. Yeah. Now, feeling uh, the feelings is the tool that I use, and I was inspired uh, from Dr. David R. Hawkins. It's a thing of um, the idea that when you're um, when you're um, uh, what you know, the idea of uh, to have no resistance to the present moment mm -hmm. would be to not put a label, not to put any labels or descriptions mm -hmm. from the ego or from the ego mind or from onto what is being experienced. So to, exp to experience experiencing, uh, to experience feelings without letting the head make a story or to try to conceptualize or to go off into the future or the past about what the feeling is that's being experienced in the present moment. I call it the feel of feelings. Like usually when a, when a feeling is being experienced, uh, and I'm, I have, of course I have to use languaging. Language is not the perfect thing to express it. But whenever, whenever you know, when I, I'm saying feeling because that's the most practical way. But when experience is experience is being experienced, mm -hmm. the head wants to make a story, or a label, or put put. And now the thing with uh, labeling is that labels are very powerful. Or mm -hmm. also when you're going into a lot of mental dialogue. It's a resistance to the now. It's a resistance to presence. It's a resistance to beingness. It's um, it's a resistance to just being empty in the present moment. And so whatever is being experienced doesn't... You also start to see, or I'll share my experience, also through many, many years of using this tool and other spiritual tools, you realize that um, the ego, um, if you don't use the men the, the mental faculties to edit or to label experiencing, then it's like the layers that create the uh, experiencing through the ego start to dissolve. You know, mm -hmm. so actually, mm -hmm. uh, just going on like if you just mm -hmm. in the beginning, it might you know it's it's often very contracted. Like many you know you'd be like having a strong feeling of fear or mm -hmm. a strong feeling of pain in your foot. Mm -hmm or, um, or uh, you know, pain in your shoulder. But later on, these things become usually much more diffuse. Mm -hmm. you know. uh, also, in the beginning, you might, you'll be experiencing things like, um, which you don't realize, is that your, the, the ego is, is tracking time. Like oh. It comes up with things like, you've already spent two minutes on doing this, and, uh, and you've still got to your shopping to do later on, you see. <laughs> so it's like, so there's various, un and a lot of this stuff is unconscious, but you eventually, you eventually, you know, as you dissolve these things, things like being aware of time, mm -hmm. being aware of the body, being aware of feelings in the body. This was one of the things that um, I learnt, I learnt, uh, you know, in my early days. I like to use this as one of the more powerful experiences in my early days of using food feelings. This is when I have really severe symptoms like gout, kidney failure, asthma. So it's, you're not talking severe, so just about feelings. You're talking about sensations in the body. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, sensations. Yeah, okay. everything. Mm -hmm. that, that's what. No, sorry. I, I call like I call pain and symptoms and breathlessness. I right. call those feelings mm -hmm. okay. because to call them because to call them something else would be to label it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not a feeling, but it's experiencing. Yeah. No. Yes. Okay. Okay. Know, uh, okay. Uh, uh, so no, you're talking a combination of sensations, feelings, and well, if you don't put a label onto any experience, it is what it is. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So even feelings is not the correct word. It is mm. what it is. Okay. Yeah, but okay. you'll start to see. Um, okay. you, you know, this, is, this is a good question. I'm grateful. Please ask them. But you know, like l let's say, like when I was starting it, I'll give you an example. Hopefully, it will clarify. Like. I would have gout attacks. Gout is like um, your foot's normal, mm -hmm. and then suddenly you'd feel an excruciating pain in your foot, and mm -hmm. the skin would swell up very ra rapidly within mm -hmm. minutes. And when your skin, you know, when your fingers, when your toes that big, and then it suddenly goes to that big, mm -hmm. is the skin stretches really rapidly, and it's an excru mm -hmm. it's, it's it's most horrific pain, mm -hmm. and your your foot swollen, inflamed, 
the skin has suddenly rapidly expanded wow. mm. and it's like there's a horrific horrific pain in it so now that would be that would be horrific and so I would just put my foot on a pillow and I'd have this ex ex you know extreme pain and close my and eyes does it just come on suddenly yes happy? very very sudden wow. and it might take oh. it might take between a day and four days for it to gradually go away mm. so it would be that horrific and take that long and you're limping around a lot or you can't walk or you'd have mm. to use walking sticks you know I'd have I'd have these I would just find it hilarious because I was 30 years old at the time and mm. um, and I'd have to use these walking sticks and you'd have these eight-year-olds like overtaking me on my face. And I could I, I finally had empathy. I usually used to like walk run past these eight-year-olds before I just dash why did why they're so slow, you know? I don't dash past them. And, and I had no I had no empathy for them. <laughs> and then at the age of thirty when they were overtaking me, I, and then I realised what they were going through. Is. So yeah. it was quite, it was quite yeah. interesting yeah. How, how you learn from these experiences. Yeah. But really anyway, but you know, no, this this great question. You know, it's not. It's actually mm. um, the build up, like the build up. You could say of emotions, then turn into symptoms, mm. uh, like like pain, asthma, mm. gout, uh, all of these things. Um, mm. And but actually. All, all they are, you could say, all that's been experienced is energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Probably, uh, even though I think in the early days, feelings is, an, is a good word yeah. to use. But you know, yeah. what is? I mean, you know, like pain usually is, is a localized and mm. seems to be like the experiencing of a localized energy. Mm. You, you've got to understand that all of these labels have power in and of themselves and they're not useful if you just try to radically use the field of feelings tool. Mm. You don't want to use the word pain. Mm. Uh, even feelings is probably too strong. You could, yeah. you could say just a vibration or an energy experience. Mm. The experience. You see, because the idea is the, the, the consciousness, the ego, mm. is having things like... Is, these are like, if you like, belief systems. Yes. is the best way. There's like a combination of beliefs operating together. Mm -hmm. You know, like a gout attack should take three days to go. It should inflame your foot mm. by about 30%. Yeah. Um, your, um, it should happen after your uric acid levels, after you've had a lot of protein consumption, is high. These are all belief systems. Mm. So it should, you know, duration, time, it should be very localized. Mm -hmm. But all of these are just thoughts they're part of a belief system mm -hmm. uh, and actually none of it is real as you let go so mm -hmm. so but you don't I also teach about the cancer beliefs, but this is a different system mm -hmm. it's as you let go of, letting go of your mind label any type of experience even like and as you know what I learned which is very very radical was that gout feels like it's a pain in your toe and your foot mm -hmm. it's like a rapid but you know that is like a label in my mm. foot is a location. Uh, pain is a label, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so, and you know, even a feeling would be a label. So these are all labels that the ego puts onto whatever is being experienced. Can I ask a question? Sophia? Yes. <clears throat> so you're saying um, the like the pent up emotions that we feel. Yes will present themselves as um, like an illness well the the pent-up emotions see as 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 one ta so as one usually suppresses feelings through distraction mechanisms and mm. ego mechanisms mm -hmm. like uh, i often share with my own story my prime addiction as a youth was food addiction mm -hmm. and um, so you know so it was unconscious but i was always using food mm. as a way not to feel my feelings mm. Yeah. You know, uh, there was social anxiety, there was anxiety around the opposite sex, there was anxiety mm. around, you know, uh, uh, connecting to people. Mm -hmm. So just having that food regularly. But some people use food. Nowadays yeah. people use Netflix a lot. Yeah. Some people use Facebook, some people use alcohol, some people yeah. use drugs. You know, like some people get into love addiction. Can I, who's the next person that can 
I don't have to think about my feelings. So mm. all kinds of distractions. Yeah. In fact, the ego is all usually looking yeah, for a absolutely. distraction, not to yeah. just experience without the ego. Yeah. So yeah. that's the ego's job, you see, yes. is not, not to exist. So, but some people do it more extremely than others. Mm. And so, so all this food addiction was like, so there's the pent up feelings. As you, as you have these accumulated feelings, shame, guilt, fear, anger, all of mm. these things start to, um, in terms of the Course in Miracles, these are just different grades of fear. Uh, yeah. just different, yeah. but they all would come under the banner of a type of fear. Mm -hmm. um, so as, the f as these feelings yeah. escalate, yeah. Yeah. then it's like your vibration, uh, your vibration right. drops, i.e. your experiencing of limitation and fear increases. Mm -hmm. Usually as you're experiencing a fear and limitation increases, you become more body identified yeah. Uh, yeah. and um, you become more, you have a stronger mm -hmm. belief that you are the body and you're thinking mm -hmm. and your perceptions of the world become more fearful mm -hmm. in nature, like people are bad, the world is bad, mm -hmm. uh, things, bad yeah, things are going to happen. Yeah, yeah. You're taking on a lot of guilt and shame mm -hmm. as well. Now, Huge amounts of negativity act like a, a, a negative, is what we would call it, a negative field of energy that you're vibrating mm. at. And they attract an appropriate belief systems to yeah, correlate absolutely. to how much guilt and fear you're holding on to. So if you're holding on to extreme levels of guilt and fear, they will pick up either a physical illness or a type of manifestated phenomena which would correlate to the level mm. of fear. Like some people might get HIV and die within a year. Some oh. people might get cancer and die within six months. Some people mm. might get like a, a migraine, mm -hmm. it's less, you know. Some people might get a mild cold for a few days because they hardly haven't gotten anything. It's like, mm. you know, um, you know I, f I forgot to feed my budgie. So you might take on a bit of guilt, you might get a bit cold, my budgie suffered for the, for the morning without yeah. food. So, you know, so it's like, you know, different things. But if you've got too much guilt and shame, you can take on very grave illnesses or life-threatening illnesses to reflect. Yeah. You're just looking, you'll pick it up from the collective, something appropriate to how much you've pent up. Usually if you're getting like near death, like I was getting kidney failure. Kidney failure and facing death in the hospital means I was like overloaded with negativity and addiction. Wow. You know, so then you're going to pick up what I call the life-threatening illnesses, you know, where you're mm. going to die. Because, you know, those vibrations, uh, extreme disconnection from the light of God means, yeah. you, you know, your mm. ego will be able to kill you off mm. pretty quickly. It actually chooses, you know, what is yeah. addiction? It's like, how can I kill the body more quickly? What? You see? So it's unconscious suicide. Yeah. Every, anyone who's committing, yeah. you, know, you know, to, like, eat... You know, uh, with my own story, um, you know, at the time of my kidney failure and the doctor saying you can't regulate potassium, avoid bananas and high potassium foods, mm -hmm. unconsciously, as soon as they said that, I just binged on bananas. <laughs> and, uh, and so they had a blood test. Oh. I, had a a blood I was a food addict. I'm a food addict. I had the blood yeah. test done. And, uh, you know, and I, le I left the hospital, I had a blood test done, and, and the nurse called me on my mobile and said, you're about to have a heart attack. Come into A&E straight away for emergency treatment. So, I, you know, I, at the time, reluctantly had to go in and have this very huge needle injected into me so I could mm -hmm. have this emergency treatment. So that is unconscious, this unconscious, like eating bananas and then eating the foods, and then alcoholics will do it, you know, people who, like, have one bad relationship after the next bad relationship oh, yeah. after, after the next bad relationship. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's the the ego as it becomes stronger will actually kill you and enter into more and more destructive, anti-life behaviors. Wow. As you as you oh. as you release your ego, your pent up feelings, mm -hmm. yeah. and this field of feelings is one of the tools. Yeah. Then you start to vibrate at these yeah. consciousness of light and wholeness, and mm -hmm. you don't need anything. All the enlightened teachers see say the same thing mm -hmm. they need and want nothing from this world mm -hmm. because that craving to get something from the world mm -hmm. is gone it vanishes because mm -hmm. they're content they're at peace within themselves so this yes. unending mm -hmm. need whether it's the unending need for approval unending need for bananas unending need for <laughs> for, yeah. for for for, for cakes <laughs> yes. oh, for, 
Net Netflix, Facebook, mm. or or for or power, you know, power, yeah. money, prestige. Buying lots of clothes. Clothes. Spending money. Spe spending is another major addiction. Yes. You know, yes. like you know, I, I I'm feeling miserable. Let me go out and buy something to comfort me. I did that. You know, I had that when I had my news of an operation. Mm -hmm. I bought a um, one thousand at the time. That's quite a lot of money. One thousand seven hundred fifty pound projector. I think. Yeah. Wow. I thought I was feeling all these feelings. Feeling all these feelings of like mm. I've got to go for a major operation, and then I I had always envied this projector. I could like like a cinema mm. in my in my room, mm -hmm. and so I thought as soon as I got that news, obviously I unconsciously I didn't want to feel it. I wanted to distract into something yes. like a banana yeah. or, a, and I thought I'd call this shop up. It was quite funny. So yeah, call this shop up and just ask them for information. Mm -hmm about the thing. I didn't realise he was a good salesman on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to ask, can you tell me a little bit about it and give me the specification and just give yeah. me, and he said, if you buy now, I'll give you a free screen. <laughs> but you have to do it now, otherwise it won't be available if you call me, if you call me later on. So I thought, well, I can't call him later on and say, I think about it, I'll think about it. So I said, okay, <laughs> and that was it, I got a projector. Which I which gave me a distraction for a few weeks and then that wore off. But it wasn't really yes. enough. So yes. these are all distractions. That's so, okay, yeah. so wow. um, yeah. So feeling the feelings. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how. Yeah, that's how. And then later on, you'll take on. It could be like a severe illness, or it could be that I don't know. You'll take up. What is it? Bungee jumping without the without the safety thing. <laughs> Trying bungee jumping without a safety yeah, cord or something. Yeah, yeah. So or climbing 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 Mount Everest on your own without a mobile phone or something like that. You'll take you'll take up something yes. which will mean death. You know, either a severe illness or a high a high a high a high thing, or you'll be one of those entertainers that like to dice with death. You know, like put. Can I put in three swords at the same time? You know. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. what kind of people do that? You know. So, um, uh, anyway, so that's that's the levels. As as you release, so as you're feeling the feelings, uh, if you allow it to label, you're like going into the belief that this is like fear is real, guilt mm -hmm. is real, pain is real, mm -hmm. and also what I realised through doing it. Like the idea of location does not exist. Mm. You know, like you, you have to refute the, like refute the label in my foot, refute yes. the label, fear in my stomach because that's mm -hmm. the location. You see. Mm -hmm. Also, um, so as I was doing it, it would be like, it would be like an intense and it would be like I'm ref remember when you're going into thoughts, disconnect mm -hmm. from the thought as quickly as possible and go back to feel the mm -hmm. feeling. Does that yes. make sense? Yeah. Yes. So but do you start from a specific part of your body? Yes. yes. Or you do start? Or well, at that time I did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because usually if I'm letting go of my thoughts, mm -hmm. I'll anchor into what is the biggest energy I'm experiencing yes. within the body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So usually when I had gout, it was obvious there was like this huge e energy vibration, shall we say, yeah. in the, seemed to be in the foot area. So there's just like is trying to have like oneness with that energy mm -hmm. and not go into thought. It's just, mm -hmm. and you're having the opposite attitude of the ego. The attitude of the ego is to think and to resist feeling that feeling mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. to, yeah. for it to be at yeah. full intensity. Mm -hmm. So the, the, it's like, it's almost like there's an unconscious, I don't want to feel it. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't want mm -hmm. it to come to maximum. Mm -hmm. And you're actually, have, not verbally, you're having a non-verbal attitude mm. of let it come in, f in fullness into the now, yeah. you see, mm -hmm. which is absolutely the 100% reverse attitude of the ego, mm -hmm. yeah. which is to yeah. mentally wish it wasn't there or try to somehow unconsciously resist it back down so you yes. don't have to feel it at, at full intensity. Yeah. So I'd go like, you know, like don't think, feel it 100% with no thought. Mm -hmm. Now, th in the beginning, of course, you'll go into thought, but then disconnect as quickly as possible, go back to the energy. And the more you do that, the quicker you'll be able to disconnect and just be purely with... You have to do practice, you know, regularly. Uh, and then, so it'd be very intense for maybe uh, 40 minutes, mm -hmm. and I'd just be disconnecting and feeling, and be like intense. But then, it would start to 
it would be, you know, like it would seem to like start to spread out. It become mm. more more diffuse, and then it become less and less intense, mm -hmm. and then less and less intense, and then at the end of it, I'd you know maybe I, it would, those ones were very severe. May, at three or four hours, I'd do it, and then at the end of it, they'd be like I'd just be like in kind of bliss and peace, mm. and actually you had found that that actually heals because there'd be no pain, mm -hmm. and mm. it would feel like there was never ever a problem. However, I mean, it wasn't, you know, that was early days for me. If I started walking around on it, it would still be inflamed, but there'd be no pain. Mm -hmm. I could probably get a few steps and they would come back again. Mm -hmm. But it was quite, quite phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, through doing all the spiritual work, you know, I haven't had gout attacks for many, many years. And so by doing that on a regular basis, like wash, washes out the belief. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it takes a while because if you've got a, something manifesting, yeah, there's probably a lot of spiritual work to do. Mm -hmm. So that would be the feel, the feel. Did the, is, was that a good explanation? It was very good. Yep. Yeah, okay. it was very good. Uh, okay. yeah. oh. So basically, what I haven't understood there, yes. let's say you start from, let's say, your feet, right? Yes. You keep going up, or it doesn't matter. The oh, point. okay, it's a good question. You can, you can just go either way. Oh, it's a, it's a good question. I, I, it's just what's most, you know, like after the foot would go, like yeah. sometimes I might be aware of like a sore throat. Oh, I yes. see. So it's like, because that seemed to be the most pent up yeah. vibration, mm -hmm. and then a more so subtle vibration seems to come up. It might be yeah. like, oh, there seems to be like a vibration here, mm -hmm. okay. you know, like around here. So yeah. then, then it's just like doing the field of feelings on that. So basically, you're concentrating on the vibration, whatever is happening at this point. Exactly. It's the, it's the vibration you're kind yes. of really concentrating. Yes. Whatever, you know, because yeah. everything is for some kind of. The feeling and the pain, the sensation, they have some kind of vibration. That's right, yes. Yeah. Frequency, so you're yeah. basically you're, you're letting go putting your attention there in that kind of energetic, whatever thing happening. Yes, it seems that, you know, at the end of the day, even, right. you know, um, yes, uh, what, what's experienced is the most intense vibrations first are the ones that, that naturally will be yeah. experienced, and yes. then there'll be more subtle vibrations which yes. you experience yeah. So you're unlayering. You're mm, unlayering these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ultimately, you could unlayer everything until okay. you go into into a state of peace, mm -hmm. a lim limitless peace. So basically, you are experiencing it rather than observing it. Yeah, this, this is not the observer. No, 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 no. I am clear about the yeah, observer. Yeah. No, I'm talking yeah. about. So in this case, you just kind of experience whatever vibration, whatever mm -hmm. you know. It, it seems it, you could say, like in the beginning, you're experiencing it, but later there is no you or yes, experience because. Because yes. remember that the ego, yeah. when you're identifying with thought, there's a you and there's an experience. Mm, yes. mm, and mm. when you're not in thought any longer, there yeah. is just experiencing. Okay. Even the idea of an ego, right. of a me, experiencing something vanishes. And there's just the experiencing of yeah. the vibration and there's no, there's no you. Because when mm, the thinking mm. and the ego identity mm. is not allowed to exist, then there's just the oneness of the experiencing. But in the beginning, it does feel like one is putting attention on it mm -hmm. and okay. is actively experiencing mm -hmm. an energy, and there's a separation in, in that manner. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank, you. Okay. thank you. Thank you for those questions. Yeah. Okay.